I'm back in Velo Fix. That's Anthony, I'm Rob. He's the mechanic. And he's gonna work on my bike and talk about what we're doing, which is installing a quark power meter onto SRAM Axis Force. Finally, I get to ride with one. I had one on a test bike recently, decided I needed it. It's a relatively minor investment for a hell of a lot of data. Mm. Um, people don't need to be told about power meters, everyone understands what they're like now. But the product we got from Quark, which is part of the SRAM family, is incredibly easy to use and I'm interested to see if it's very easy to install as well. So, Anthony's going to do the talking, I'm going to do the filming and I'm off camera now. So. SRAM and their uh, bottom bracket crank, uh, the, well the crank interface, that is very very tight to undo. It's uh, something that you need a friend for and uh, there's a chance of snapping tools. So we've already undone this bolt already um, to, a, to an amount um, and then we're going to move forward and do the rest of it. So the maximum yeah. torque setting when tightening this up is 54 newtons. Is it a popular product, the Quark power meter? Uh, yeah, it is. As, as far as power meters go, uh, like all power meters, there's plenty on, available in the market. These are quite nice because they sit at the spider, so you can use any pedal system that you want. It's uh, not in striking distance of hitting anything with a pedal system. It's not affected by the crank arms uh, in flex or, or, or uh, temperature in that sense. Um, and the backup service from uh, SRAM is uh, fantastic. So, uh, yeah, they're quite a, quite a nice unit. Very nice. self-extracting bolt. So we're going to do this and the whole crank will then come off itself. We'll clean all of that. Torx, T20, four nits. Tells you what you need to do anyway. We've taken off all of the bolts out of the spider, removed the old spider, and we're now going to install the next one. However, that interface between the spider and the actual crank, it's aluminium to aluminium. So we want to uh, have some grease all the way around that uh, part of the interface so there's no creaking. Battery cover, you want to have that lined up at the end of the crank. Slips down like that, flip it over, and it's all lined up, ready to put the, the bolts back in. And that's it. That's it. And that's it. That's it. That's it. It's crazy, huh? It's super easy. So we're just getting these in, snug them down. Now we need to tighten all of those bolts. Now, very, very important that it goes down to four newtons. Now this, as with all bolts on a bike, need a torque wrench. So we've mounted the new spider, old spider's over here, very very straightforward. Um, we've mounted the new spider onto the crank arm, now we've just got to install the chain rings and make a note of the uh, pin that comes out that goes behind the crank arm. So easiest way is through, line it up, now you've got that where you need it to be and the chain pin is right there. Now lay that down. You've got the small ring and again it's got a guide. Nowhere else does it have that guide so that guide goes underneath. Just underneath 
the crank arm. And now we've got some fresh bolts to go in. It comes with a uh, green thread lock. And again, using a torque wrench, torque newtons. Tight, nothing too hard. Shouldn't over tighten these. Remove that from the battery. It's a 2032, pretty standard in the bike industry. Starts getting firm, compressing the rubber. The light comes on. Tip. So We've installed the power meter, we want to go and use it. We want to uh, sync it into our head unit or however we're going to um, utilize the power meter. However, it's a good idea to get the Quark BLE app. Um, from there, you can uh, check out the health of the power meter and make sure it's all calibrated. And if there are any updates, you can update them. The other thing is you can calibrate the uh, actual power meter uh, from the app or you can calibrate it from the head unit. Now, very, very simple. What we need to do, just got the Quark app, search for the power meter. The power meter is already turned on um, as we've just installed the battery and as we're showing here we've got the actual power meter number so that's fine. Select that and we've got all the information about the power meter. We want to set the zero. Okay, return value negative 56. That's within range. So that is okay and good to go. You should be setting the uh, recalibrating the power meter every time you go for a ride to account for temperature variation. One day you ride in 30 degree heat, the next day you ride in a 10 degree day. Uh, you need to have that calibrated and then you'll get more consistent uh, data for your train. Well, that is the that come in. Uh, it was a matter of uh, 30 And uh, suddenly I've got a suddenly I've got a lot more data at my disposal. All right, thanks very much, Anthony. Always a pleasure working with you. Yeah.